So, why do we celebrate Good Friday? Well, Isaiah chapters 52 and 53 prophesy about Jesus' crucifixion, a prophecy that Jesus would later fulfill because of his sacrifice for us. So these verses read, See, my servant will prosper. He will be highly exalted. But many were amazed when they saw him. His face was so disfigured, he seemed hardly human. And from his appearance, one would scarcely know he was a man. And he will startle many nations. Kings will stand speechless in his presence, for they will see what they had not been told. They will understand what they had not heard about. Who has believed our message? To whom has the Lord revealed his powerful arm? My servant grew up in the Lord's presence like a tender green shoot, like a root in dry ground. There was nothing beautiful or majestic about his appearance, nothing to attract us to him. He was despised and rejected, a man of sorrows, acquainted with deepest grief. We turned our backs on him and looked the other way. He was despised. We did not care. Yet it was our weakness he carried. It was our sorrows that weighed him down. And we thought his troubles were a punishment from God, a punishment for his own sins. But he was pierced for our rebellion, crushed for our sins. He was beaten so we could be made whole. He was whipped so we could be healed. All of us, like sheep, have strayed away. We have left God's path to follow our own. Yet the Lord laid on him the sins of us all. He was oppressed and treated harshly, yet he never said a word. He was led like a lamb to the slaughter, and as a sheep is silent before the shearers, he did not open his mouth. Unjustly condemned, he was led away. No one cared that he died without the sentence, that his life was cut short in midstream. But he was struck down for the rebellion of my people. He had done no wrong and had never deceived anyone, but he was buried like a criminal. He was put in a rich man's grave. But it was the Lord's good plan to crush him and cause him grief. Yet when his life is made an offering for sin, he will have many descendants. He will enjoy a long life, and the Lord's good plan will prosper in his hands. When he sees all that is accomplished by his anguish, he will be satisfied. And because of his experience, my righteous servant will make it possible for many to be counted righteous for he will bear all their sins. I will give him the honors of a victorious soldier because he exposed himself to death. He was counted among the rebels. He bore the sins of many and interceded for rebels. This passage is from Isaiah 52, 13 through 53, 12. It is titled, The Lord's Suffering Servant. The servant that this Old Testament passage speaks of is Jesus Christ, the Son of God. It was critical that Jesus' life, death, and resurrection took place at the specific moment in history that it did. As Messiah, one of the things that had to happen in Jesus' life was the fulfillment of prophetic scriptures, like the passage we read from Isaiah. Isaiah chapters 40 through 60 are estimated to have been written roughly around 681 BC, some six to 700 years before Christ walked this earth. Yet the events prophesied in Isaiah precisely describe the brutality of the Roman Empire's crucifixion, the same crucifixion that Jesus bore upon his shoulders to offer us freedom from sin and death. So why do we celebrate Good Friday? After all, the Son of God, Jesus Christ, was murdered by the very people he created. We celebrate because we know that Jesus did not stay dead. Three days later, Jesus rose from the dead holding freedom a new life for everyone. He held it in his nail-driven hands. We celebrate because without Jesus' crucifixion and death, there would be no resurrection. And if there was no resurrection, we would have no opportunity for new life or eternity with God. We celebrate because on history's darkest day, Jesus and Jesus alone remained good. Come out of this land like you've done it.